Good morning. This is November 8th, our Remembrance Day Sunday service. Welcome to our virtual online service. My name is Reverend Brian McLeod. We're here in Knox Presbyterian Church in Bedeck, Cape Breton, with our sister church of Ephraim Scott. We join you, invite you to worship with us today. May God bless you. The call of worship. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us the freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the peace camp organizer, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to protest. It is the soldier, not the politician, who has given his blood, his body, his life. The soldier who has given these freedoms. Let us remember for God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humankind. Amen. In Flanders Field, written by John McCrae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place in the sky. The lark still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw the sunset glow. Lived, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Tape up a quarrel with the foe, to you from fallen hands we throw. The torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Those poppies grow in Flanders Field. Amen. Let's bow our head in prayer and let's pray. Almighty eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day, fulfilling us as we, as in them, the purpose of your love, and bring us all to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God of nations, whose sovereign rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Pour out your peace into the hearts of all, that all races and peoples may learn to live as members of one family in obedience to your law. Amen. Our prayer confession. All merciful God, we look for the day when nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Even so, we confess how little we have done to work for justice as in the world, which is the only foundation of lasting peace, and how often we have harbored in our hearts the envy, the prejudice and resentments, which are the root of so much conflict. For the sake of Christ, the Prince of Peace, have mercy upon us, O God, and forgive us, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, equip us to be channels of your peace in this world, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. The prophet Micah reminds us that God requires of us three things, to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with God. To all who truly repent, who turn away from hostility and seek reconciliation with God and neighbor in kindness and humility, God offers forgiveness and peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all now. Amen. Our mission moment for today is for November 8th. called provide more than medicine. When Difa first noticed something wrong with her leg, she visited her local hospital in Nepal to get it checked out. But after a few years, Diva's skin problems have gotten worse, not better. After visiting many clinics and traditional healers, Diva still couldn't find a solution. When she was just about to give up hope, Diva's friend suggested that she visit the Shining Hospital, supported by PWS and DE. The hospital provides support, treatment, and education for people suffering from leprosy. At the hospital, staff diagnosed Diva's skin condition, provided the proper medicine, and taught her about her condition. Today, she's thankful for the support she has received. Amen. I invite everybody to pick up your Bible now, open up the Old Testament, and we're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, read the first eight verses. There's a time for everything and a season for activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Amen. Our next is Psalm 91. Turn to Psalms. Go to chapter 91, read the first 12 verses of Psalm chapter 91. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God, whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his opinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Amen. Our next reading is from the Old Testament again, is Micah chapter 4, reading the first five verses. Micah chapter 4, reading the first five verses. In the last days the mountains of the Lord's temple will be established. As the highest of the mountains it will be exalted above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his way, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They'll beat their swords into plowshares, the spears and the pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Everyone will sit under their own vine, under their own fig tree. No one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Our final reading is John chapter 15, reading verse 5 to 17. So turn to the New Testament, go in the Gospels to John chapter 15, 5 to 17. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commands, remain in your love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do, not, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask, the name of the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Since this is Remembrance Day, we will now play the last post.
They shall not grow old as do we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. But the going down in the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The title of my sermon today is, We Will Remember Them. I am a Canadian free to speak without fear, free to worship in my own way, free to stand for what I might think right, free to oppose what I believe wrong, or free to choose those who shall govern my country. This heritage of freedom I pledge to uphold for myself and all humankind. John Diefenbaker. A true man does not stand up for himself. He stands up for those that do not have the ability to. William Lyme Mackenzie King. At the 11th hour, 11th day, 11th month, the guns fell silent on the Western Front to bring to an end of the First World War. Our nation and Commonwealth has recalled that moment through our remembrance events down the decades. Decades during which the men and women of armed services have continued to pay the ultimate sacrifice. And so, 102 years later, we stand here today to remember lives sacrificed in the service of our country, those traumatized and injured in conflict. May we have such a devotion to justice and freedom that the heroism of all who fought and still fight may continue to be remembered in a nation of service in a world of peace. Amen. So what are we doing here today? We're meeting to worship God, to remember those who served, especially those who paid the supreme sacrifice. Greater love has no man than this. And to reevaluate the direction of our own lives before Almighty God. All too often we only begin to think about God at times of crisis in our lives. But if this is the case, don't stop thinking about him when the clouds clear and the sun shines again. Don't just meet God here this morning, but go with him and take him with you when you leave here today. Every year as Canadians remember what November 11 means to us, we'll never forget. This year is especially important as this is the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands. 75th anniversary of VE Day and 75th anniversary of VJ Day. We're not here to glorify war, but to remember the history and hopefully we'll learn from this and one day never repeat it. This morning I want to share with you two soldier outcomes, one from World War I and one from World War II, what the cost of freedom looks like from the prophet Micah. James Richardson like most musicians use their skills to entertain people. But James Richardson wanted more. And when World War I broke out, he immediately enlisted in Canada's 16th Infantry Platoon as a piper. What more terrifying than going to war? How about going to war with Scottish bagpipes as your weapon? Richardson's platoon was in the thick of the Battle of Somme, one of the largest battles in human history. On October 8, 1916, this unit was instructed to go over the top, rush a fortified German position. Going over the top was military speak for climbing out of your trench and running head on towards the enemy while being met with a shower of bullets, artillery, and grenades. And one of the most suicidal tactics ever used in warfare, encountering heavy fire in a line of barbed wire the assault was so halted, casualties mounted, and morale quickly down dwindled. It was at this critical moment that Richard stood up and began playing his bagpipes, walking up and down in sight of the bewildered Germans. The act of bravery so inspired his comrades that they immediately continued their assault and captured this position. Later that day, Richard was escorting a wounded soldier and numbered German prisoners when he realized that he had left his bagpipes behind he went back for his glorious instrument and was never heard from again. His bagpipes were lost until 2002 when a bloody broken set of pipes were discovered in Scotland and identified as his. 
They are now on public display in Canada. The passage from Micah 4.4 4 is repeated, 4.3.1, is repeated in the passage from Isaiah 2.1-3. Since Isaiah and Micah were prophets, it's not surprising that the same Spirit of the Lord could give these two prophets the same word. To establish and emphasize God's word. In verse 2 of this passage from Micah, it says, He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his path. The prophet Micah sees the world streaming in Jerusalem to meet with the Lord God and to know him better. In verse 3 of Micah, he will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. And during the reign of Jesus, there will be no more war. There will be, still be conflicts between nations and individuals, but they will do, be justly and decisively resolved by the Messiah and those who reign with him. He shall judge between the nations and shall rebuke many people. It isn't the reign of the Messiah itself that will change the heart of man. Citizens of earth will still need to trust in Jesus and his work on their behalf for their personal salvation during the millennium. But war and armed conflict will not be tolerated. Nation shall not lift sword up against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. It's important to see that this is not the peace of retreat. This is the peace of enforced righteousness. There's no more war, no more need for swords. So why not make them into plowshares? There's no more conflict between because there is a different ruler on earth, Jesus Christ. Psalm 2, 9 tells us what the Messiah will do to the disobedient in that day. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. What we see from this passage of Micah is what freedom really means and how we can obtain it. There are four freedoms here. Freedom from ignorance. He will teach us his ways. Verse 2. Freedom from war. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Verse 3. Freedom from want. Everyone shall sit under his vine and under his tree. Verse 4. And finally, freedom from fear. No one shall make them afraid. Verse 4. Sergeant Major Stewart of Woodlands, Prince Island, has an interesting story. George Stewart started with the North Nova High Scotia Highlanders on D-Day as a private and quickly rose to the ranks to Lance Corporal, Section Commander, and then Platoon Sergeant. In the fighting through Normandy, Germany, he lost many platoon commanders and took command of a platoon. At the end of the war, he found himself one of the one handful of North Novas who survived and rifle platoon from D-Day without being killed or wounded. In that period, he rose from Buck Private to Sergeant Major of Charlie, Charlie Company. Sergeant Major Stewart began his army service with the Prince of Island Highlanders in Dartmouth in the winter of 1939. He went overseas to join the famed North Novas, which later came under control of the command of Colonel D.F. Forbes. His name, known to thousands of men overseas, is highly revered in this platoon. Sergeant Major Stewart was awarded the MH Military Medal and received this medal from King George VI. Sergeant Major Stewart was awarded this medal for bravery. He stored in a pillbox by himself and removed fellow comrades off the battlefield during fierce fighting. George Stewart attributes his staying power in life to just pure luck and common horse sense. George Stewart is my grandfather's brother. George would never talk about what he saw or what he experienced during the war. Here's an example of a young man leaving his family and one of the lucky ones to come home. On Remembrance Day, we, as we remember those who gave their lives so others would have the freedom to speak and live without tyranny, we are grateful for their ultimate sacrifice. I hardly need saying that war costs many innocent lives. 
yet to preserve the precious freedom we are privileged to enjoy today, we honor those who defended that individual's right to choose, even at the cost of their own lives. You know, the Bible tells us we will have wars, even rumors of war, but Jesus is coming again. The signs are the, that his return is near. The judge is at the door. That there's an ultimate hope for these times. And although you and I may live in uncertain times, we have the peace that passes all understanding. It is Jesus' personal gift for us. You see, there's a time for everything. A season for every activity in the heavens. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. A time to uproot. A time to kill. A time to heal. A time to tear down. A time to build. A time to weep. A time to laugh. A time to mourn. A time to dance. A time to scatter stones. A time to gather them. A time to embrace. A time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war. A time for peace. The sacred scriptures tell us that there is a time for everything under the heavens. Today, we quietly gather at this at a time of peace to recognize those brave souls who were willing to stand in our place during a time of war. We gather here today in solemn respect to decorate the graves of our loved ones, men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice so that we may know peace in our lifetimes. They fought and won for us a peace that was denied them, but one that we have rested in, and we have longed and enjoyed. Let the peace of God always rule in our hearts. Amen. Let's bow our, prayer, bow our head for a prayer of dedication. God of justice and generosity, when we consider that Christ gave his very life for our sakes, we are humbled to offer you what we bring today. We're also humbled by the memory of those who gave up their youth, their families, and their very lives in conflict so that justice and truth will prevail. Bless our gifts, small in comparison, for the possibility your spirit can create, so justice and truth continue to prevail in the world you love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men, that we may be peacekeepers in our homes, in our community, in our country, in our world. Lord God, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all mankind in the cause of peace, for relief of want and suffering. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us always faithful. Amen. Let's bow our head in prayer, for a prayer of thanksgiving the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, in and every season, in times of poverty and prosperity, in times of sorrow and joy, in times of war and in times of peace, you've been present with your people. As we gather again in this place at this time of remembrance, we call those who gave their lives in war so that others might live in freedom and peace. May they dwell in peace and eternal presence. Remember those whose bodies, minds, and souls are scarred by war and their lives will forever bear the wounds of trauma, violence, and love. <coughs> we remember the continuing courage and sacrifice of the men and women who serve in the Canaan Armed Forces and their families. Remember all those innocent who have been caught up in the world's power struggles, those who have lost their homes and livelihoods, those who now seek safe refuge in their countries, other countries, and children who have no sense of security or hope for the future. Remember those who make and keep peace, especially give you thanks for those who form and enforce just laws and create societies of peace and blessedness. Remember God's grace and care in time of need, conflict, or crisis, whether between nations, within families, or workplaces, or among friends. Let there be peace, Lord, and let it begin with us, with each of us. Father, we especially pray for this church, Sister Church of Ethan Scott. We pray for the EHS, 
our volunteer fire department, the RCMP, Royal Canadian Armed Forces, our veterans today, Father. We pray for Alderwood, McLeod House, and our hospital. We pray for the young people, Father. Father, we continue to pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Don't forget to donate to the food bank. BYGT will meet on Sunday from 4 to 5.30. SYG meets on Monday at 4 to 5. BYG meets at 5.45 to 6.45, then 7 to 8 on Monday. Tuesday Mental Health Group will meet at 7 p.m. Our prayer list is for this week will be posted online, so please take some time and pray for these people in the prayer list. Receive the blessing from Almighty God. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of the day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Know he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Go now in peace and faith and in love. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will remember. God bless you. Have a good week. Stay safe.